Okay, good morning, guys. Today we are going to have another class of social studies. We are going to study uh, chapter two, lesson three, the Columbian Exchange. So I need you to take your book, social studies book, your highlighter and your pen or pencil because we will be answering. Um, so let's move to page 52 in your books. Open your books in page 52. Okay, there we have page 52 and also 53. We will be working uh, in this lesson. And first, the Columbian Exchange, we have the vocabulary. In this lesson, we have three words or three terms that we have to know. The first one is Columbian Exchange. Let's repeat after me. Columbian Exchange. Epidemic. Devastation, Columbian exchange, epidemic, and devastation. We will be explaining those words. Meanwhile, we will be um, explaining also the lesson. Uh, when Christopher Columbus, I want you to underline this, landed in the Americas in 1492, he changed history. Why he changed history when, when he came to the Americas? Uh, because something was put in motion. Something started. Do you know what started? What started was the Columbian Exchange. And what is the Columbian Exchange? So I want you to underline the meaning. Was a movement of people, animals, plants, cultures and even diseases between the Eastern and the Western hemispheres. Here we have the Eastern and here we have the Western hemisphere. So it was a movement of animals, plants, and also diseases from Europe to America and also from America to Europe. To that movement of people, plants, animals, and also diseases, we call the Columbian Exchange. What? Why the Columbian? Because it was Columbus who started this. In exchange, because it was a near interchange, an exchange of um, those things. So let's continue with the class. Now we are going to changing ways of life. How the life of Native Americans that were living in America continent was changed when European people came to the Americas. What changes did occur in the continent of America? So let's see. The arrival of Europeans in the Americas transform Native American life. And right now we are going to see how the life of Native Americans was transformed. When Europeans came to America, the conquistadors killed Native peoples in the battle. Also, they took over their cities. And also, they took their land. So here you can see this picture in which European people are uh, killing Native Americans in, um, uh, no, in the continent of America. And after that, they took their cities and also, and also their properties, their lands. But here we have another change for uh, the Native people. Priest, persuade many native people to become Christians, Christians, okay? So here we can see the picture. A. Priest is the leader of um, the Catholic Church. So Priest came from Europe to North America trying to combines people to become Christians, but by force. 
also Europeans forced Native Americans to work in the fields. Looking here, imagine the land belonged to Native Americans. They were the owners. But uh, Euro European people came to the Americas, took their lands, their properties, and as if that was, uh, was uh, little, they forced Native Americans to work in the land that wa uh, was theirs. So they were forced to work in their own lands. Imagine that. And not, all, not only in farms, they were also uh, forced to work in dangerous mines. Okay, in the mines, they found valuable um, uh, materials such as gold, um, silver, and other minerals that they extracted from the earth in the mines. So, looking here, um, as a result of all these, countries such as Spain and Portugal gained both wealth and power from the Americas. So, if you can see here, we have a cause and an effect. All this is what happened to native people in, in America. It was bad or, or um, good things. Bad things, right? And this was the result. It was a good result, but for Europe and for um, uh, countries such as Spain and Portugal. Why? Uh, because they gained wealth or money and power also because they were controlling the new lands. Do you know what did they do with uh, the gold and the silver that they found in the mines? Ah, they put this gold and silver into ships and they sent those uh, minerals to Spain and to Portugal. It was in that way that Spain and Portugal gained wealth and power from the Americas. Okay, guys, let's move to page 53 only. In page 53, we have the harmful effects or the bad effects for Native Americans. So I want you to underline this. Europeans brought disease germs with them that had a terrible impact for Native Americans. I want you to see this word that we have been using these days and also nowadays in our world, disease. A disease is an illness, enfermedad, disease. Okay, I want you to learn this uh, word, disease. So when Europeans came to Americas, they brought some diseases that didn't exist in America. Uh, for example, they brought smallpox. It's in here also. I want you to circle the, the disease. If you can see in the picture, smallpox is uh, like little balls in the body. Also, they brought measles. Here we, we can see what is misless in there. Look what terrible it seems, seems. And also malaria. This one you know it more. And it's transmitted by mosquitoes. Okay, all these three diseases and other ones, smallpox, misless, malaria, were brought from Europe to the Americas. And what happened? It was a terrible impact for the native people because they they didn't have the defenses in their bodies to fight against those diseases 
That is what is happening right now in all the world. The new coronavirus that we are um, just facing today is a new disease that started in, in China, right? And no one in the world, because it was a new disease, no one in the world has the defenses in their bodies to fight against this uh, virus that is attacking nowadays our, our planet. So what happens with the body? The body tries to fight with that disease, but as we do not have the defenses, uh, many people is dying until we find a, a vaccine to control this virus. So epidemics started to outbreak in uh, America. So I want you to see the other word of the vocabulary. Look, epidemic. So what is an epidemic? I want you to underline is an outbreak of disease that spreads quickly and affects many people. So when a uh, disease starts to spread and affects many people and the spread is very quickly, uh, but the disease is only in one area, we have an epidemic. After that, there was a great devastation. That is another word of the vocabulary or great harm, great devastation. And millions of people died. Now what we have today in our world is an epidemic or what? What we have today with the coronavirus is a pandemic. And what is the difference between an epidemic and a pandemic? I want you to see this chart that we have in here. We have epidemic and we have pandemic. Pandemic and epidemic. If you can see in here, we have an example of an epidemic. It says that an epidemic is a disease that affects many people, look, disease that affects many people in a population. Here we have the disease. But this disease is affecting only one area in, um, in the world, okay? The, um, the epidemic is an illness that spreads quickly, affects many people, but only in one area. Now, look by here. What is a pandemic? It's also a disease or an illness that spreads quickly also, but affects many areas around the world. So, in here also. What we have uh, today, nowadays, with the coronavirus is a pandemic because it's affecting many countries. We have our, uh, approximately 178 countries that have been affected by this virus. And this virus is um, spreading very quickly. That's why we have to stay home and take care of us and our families. Okay, so do you understand the difference between epidemic and pandemic? Okay, for example, an example of an epidemic here in Honduras is dengue. Because it's affecting only certain areas of Honduras, it spreads quickly, it affects many people, but it's not in all the world. But a coronavirus is a pandemic. Okay, so let's continue with the class. Exploration and colonization didn't affect only Native Americans. Uh, the exploration and colonization affected also Africans. So I want you to underline this. Um, the exploration and colonization in the Americas affected Africans too. And how is that possible? Because Africa is in the other side of the world how the exploration that European people did into the Americas affected Africa, pe African people. Ah, let me explain you why. 
when all these diseases started to come to America, and Native Americans were dying because of the Ill illnesses, the diseases, so the population of Native Americans started to decrease. Population started to decrease. And what happened? Europeans were saying, oh my goodness, and now what we are going to do? We need people to work in the farms. We need people to work um, in the mines. What can we do? Ah, and they started to think about the African people. So they, were, they went to Africa and they captured the African people. And looking here, captured African were enslaved and also they were forced onto ships and transported across the Atlantic Ocean. If you can see here in the picture, here in this picture you can see how African people were treated. They were treated like animals. They were put by force into ships and they were transported to America continent by force. Here you can see how uh, some of them are trying to defend themselves, but many of that of the African people died in the journey, in when they were tran uh, being transported to America, and those who survived were forced to work in the farms. Here you can see how they were being treated. They were being treated as slaves, as if they were animals. They were uh, replacing the Native Americans that were dying because of the illnesses. So they were brought to America, to American continent, to work in the farms as slaves. So guys, we are going to answer number one Question number one that you have it in here, uh, in this part of here. This one is for you. It says, you have to read the caption. Here we have some medals from Native Americans and uh, Spanish explorers melted down Native American artifacts. Melted down is uh, put the objects in, in fire and they were melted. And it says that you have to explain how you know that these objects were valuable for native people. Why do you think these objects that you see here, sorry, were valuable for native people? They are made of what? What materials can you see in there? What a Minerals, can you see in there? Ah, okay, so answer. They were valuable because they were made of what materials? So I will uh, leave this question for And now we are going to answer number two. Here we have number two. And it's cause and effect. You already know what is cause and what is effect, okay? So it says, write the effect of colonization of the Americans on each group of people. Effects of colonization. Remember that colonization is uh, European explorers coming to the Americas, trying to control the lands and taking the properties and the lands uh, uh, of Native Americans and forcing them to work for them. That is colonization. So, what effect colonization had for European people? It was a good effect for them or it was a bad effect for them? Ah, it was a good, right? For them, for European people. If you return to this page, page um, 52, here we can see the effect for... European people, read it again, and you are going to find that it was a good effect for European people. So, what was that effect? Europeans gain what? Money or wealth, and also power or control. So, let's answer. I'm sorry. 
And what was the effect for Native Americans? What happened to Native Americans because of colonization? Do you remember uh, in the first page, in page 52, we, we saw the effects. They were killed, uh, they lost their land, their properties, and also they were forced to what? They were forced to work, excellent. So let's answer also in here, what were the effects of colonization for uh, for Americans? And in here we have the effects of colonization for Africans. They were captured, they were enslaved and transported to the Americas to work, but to work by force. So let's see if you answer correctly. For Europeans, for Europeans, here we have it, look. They gain wealth and power for their countries. And for Americans, many died or were forced to work. Okay? And for the Africans, we already know what happened with them. So, for Europeans, colonization was something good. For Native Americans, was something bad. And for Africans, was also something bad. But colonization not, uh, was not only bad things. There were good things about colonization also for uh, America. And right now we are going to see what good things uh, could we um, uh, or could they have from colonization. Or we also, because now we have uh, some results of those uh, colonization. So let's move to page. 54 and also page 55. In there you can see a map, the Colombian exchange, and we can see here um, Europe, Africa, and all America, North, Central, and South America. Uh, remember that Europe was trying to colonize America in Europe, use African people to come to America and work because native people in America were dying because of the illnesses that European people brought to uh, America. So, but also we have that colonization brought also a powerful exchange. So what was that exchange? I want you to underline this, look. When Europeans first landed in the Americas, they found plants and animals they had never seen before. What does it mean? Uh, that when European, came to, uh, European people came to Americas, there were animals and plants in America that didn't exist in Europe. And they were amazed of that because um, they found very delicious fruits, vegetables, and also some animals that didn't exist in Europe. So what we are going to do right now, in page 54 and 55, we are going to find food and animals that existed in North America, but not in Europe. And also food and animals that existed in Europe, but not, not in North America. So we are going to circle um, those vegetables, fruits, and animals, okay, in both pages. And by doing that, we are doing question number three, because it says circle foods and animals that are mentioned in the text on these two pages. And then after circling those uh, animals and plants, you are going to write in here, in this space of here, you are going to write what was from the Americas, what vegetables, fruits, and animals uh, were from the Americas, and in this space of here, you are going to write what food, plants, and animals were from Europe, Africa, and Asia. Okay, are you ready? So let's continue. Let's continue reading here. Foods from the Americas, such as 
Corn. Here we have the first. What is next? Peanuts. What else? Potatoes. Squash. Pineapples. Became part of their diet. All these corn, peanuts, potatoes, squash, and pineapples were from, from uh, Europe or from America? From America. Excellent. So that means that you are going to write this in this part. Okay? So let's continue. The European in turn brought with them plants unknown in the Americas. European people also brought plants and animals that didn't exist in America. So here we have wheat, rice, peaches, lettuce, uh, were some crops that uh, European people brought to the Americas. So you are going to write these ones where? In this space. Okay, let's see if we can find more. Looking here, we have onions, coffee, bananas, what else? Shoe, sorry, sugar cane, originally came from Africa or Asia. So these ones, onions, coffee, banana, and sugar cane, came, uh, came from Africa and Asia. So you have to write it in here also because in here you are writing uh, animals, people, and uh, sorry, animal food and plant that came from Europe, Africa, and Asia. So let's continue looking for more. European people also brought animals such as horses, sorry, horses, pigs, chickens, and cattle. These animals were brought from Europe. So you have to write them where? In this part. Ah, but we didn't see here that we also have turkeys, guinea pigs, and llamas. These animals were from, excellent, from America. So you have to classify all these animals and plants that you have served a circled here, you have to classify them or here or here, okay? According to what uh, what place they belong at. You know, horses were animals that were brought from Europe to Americas, to American people. They didn't know the horses, but when they knew the horses, they were amazed. American people. Why? Ah, because with horses, they had a new way to transport them, themselves. And also they were using horses to transport heavy things for working, for hunting, for looking for food in a fast way. So this is one of the things that were good for uh, American people because they could use horses uh, uh, they started to learn how to ride a horse very quick, very fast, and they did it very well. And that is what uh, was one of the things that were um, good for Native Americans. So let's look in here. Uh, here we have another, but you already circle circle this one in the, in the other page. Potatoes. Also we have corn by here. Let me see where. Let me find the corn here. Corn is in here. You can look at it in your books also. Uh, potatoes and corn, remember that were from Americas, uh, from America. But European people learn how to uh, plant potatoes and they learn how to plant corns, corn also. And they included potato and corn into their diets, into their food. But not also European people, also Americans. Americans were including in their food wheat, rice, and sugar cane. They 
also learn how to plant wheat, how to plant uh, rice, or how to grow rice and sugar cane. And they were including those uh, food in their uh, diets. So did you answer what is in here? And what is in here? Okay. So let's review what animals and food came from America to Europe and what animals and food came from Europe to America. Let's see in the, in the, in the next slide. Food taken from the America to Europe, from America to Europe. We have corn, peanuts, potatoes, squash, pineapple, and what animals? Ja uh, turkeys, sorry. Guinea pigs. These ones are guinea pigs. And llamas. If you can see all those food and plants and animals were taken from the Americas to Europe because all these food and plants and animals didn't exist in Europe. Let's see now from Europe, from Europe to America. Now from Europe to America. What do we have? Wheat, rice, peaches, lettuce, bananas, onions, coffee, sugar cane, horses, pigs, chickens. And there were more, but these ones are examples of the things that they were, European people were bringing from Europe to America. So to this movement of food from America to Europe and from Europe to America, we call it Colombian exchange. So remember, the Colombian exchange was the movement of plants, animals, and food from America to Europe and from Europe to America. That is Colombian exchange. Now let's move to page 56. Let's go to page 56. And in here we have a, the last topic that we are going to see today. That is cultures collide. These ones, culture collide. So I want you to underline what it says in here. Plants, animals, and diseases were not the only things shared during the Columbian exchange. Do you remember uh, they were exchanging plants, animals, food, and also diseases? Okay, the malaria, the smallpox, the measles. Do you remember that, right? Okay, but this was not the only thing that, th that they were exchanging. Why? Because they were exchanging also culture. They were also exchange cause, uh, culture. And what is culture? So I want you to see this part of here. Here we have culture. Culture is what identifies a place according to what? To clothing. For example, in our culture, in Honduras, we dress differently from, for example, China. The clothing is different because the culture is different. Or, for example, from uh, our dress is different or our clothes is different from Russia. In Russia, uh, you know that men wear skirts. Why? Because it's the culture, okay? Also, culture is related to language. In Honduras, we talk uh, Spanish. In some places, English, like in uh, the Bay Islands, but our official language is um, the Spanish language. 
but we have other countries with different languages according to the culture. Uh, we have also different religions. We have Christianity, uh, we have the Islam, Hinduism, uh, Judaism, and all other uh, religions that exist all over the world. And it's according to culture also. Music is also part of culture. Uh, the music that we have in here, it might be different from the one that is in the Indians, okay? Or from another countries, because it's according to culture. The dances, dances also are different. Uh, the way that in people in Honduras dance is different from the way that people in other countries dance. We have different kind of dance. And also we have different celebrations. Uh, many countries, or I think all the countries, have special celebrations, special things that they celebrate according to their culture. So I want you to circle here in your books what is culture. They were uh, wearing different clothing, that is culture, different languages, that is culture also, different religions. And also music, dance, and celebrations. If you can, it will be nice if you can draw this mind map in this space. Okay, you can do that, culture, and uh, write that culture is clothing, language, religion, music, dance, and also celebrations, okay? You can do that in this space in your book for you to remember better what is culture. So let's remember uh, the Colombian exchange was a movement of what things? Food, plants, animals, what else? Diseases or illnesses and also culture, okay? All that move, movement was what we know as the Columbian Exchange. And now let's move to the last question of this lesson. Well, the last question that you are going to do with me because then you have to answer number five and number six in this section, in the got it section, okay? So number four says draw conclusions. Remember that a conclusion is a, something that you conclude or something that you infer after reading facts. So we are going to read fact number one that says many Native Americans died from diseases brought by Europeans. Let's read fact number two. Deadly conflicts broke out when Native Americans resisted some changes when they didn't want to accept what Europeans said, for example, in religion um, areas, they were having conflicts with European people because they had to accept what European people were uh, demanding from them. So what can you conclude after reading these facts? It was something good, um, the Colombian exchange for American people or not? In the majority, was something bad, right? So what what uh, what can we conclude? We can conclude that the Colombian exchange had harmful effects on some Native Americans. Okay? So after that, remember that you have to do number five and number six. That is for you in the got it section. See you in another class, in another day. And remember, stay home and following instructions for you to be safe of this uh, new virus.